Hi guys, so I'm out here um, having my SPF on and I wanted to stress to most people that when you go out in the sun and we're in Durban right now, the sun today is very forgiving but I just did my chemical peel a few weeks ago so the one most essential thing is for you to have your SPF. So I'm going to be talking about um, how you can basically have SPF going on every day on your skin throughout the day without having to apply that very thick uh, titanium dioxide um, SPF. You can use something like rosemary or rose water. Yes. So um, stick around. I'm going to be talking about SPF for when you're outdoors like I am today. Hey guys, so SPF is sun protection factor. I forgot to mention that. Basically, um, there are different values, which is why you'll see SPF plus 50, SPF plus 60, SPF plus 90, basically giving you um, an indication of how strong or how effective your sun protection is. Okay, so that's what SPF stands for, sun protection factor. So you you get a rating depending on the ingredients that are being used. Um, it'll tell you how long you can put it on for. So normally SPF sunscreen doesn't really last that long. The most that it lasts for is about an hour, not more than that. So every single hour, every other hour, you have to keep applying it if you want it to be effective and if you want it to work for um, the entire day especially if you're outdoors so it's important that you know um, how strong and how effective your sun protection is and this is something that can uh, add value to uh, people who are doing chemical peels because with the chemical peel is literally exposing your skin and therefore um, the need to use sun protection becomes higher because you have literally just taking off uh, like your top layer of your skin and so it's highly sensitive which is why we say that you need to up your sun protection after you do your chemical peel so I'm going to um, run you down in terms of ingredients that are really good for sun protection in summer and those that are easily usable like you can apply it every hour or every two hours um, every so often when you need it um, so stay tuned and don't you go now welcome beautiful this is beauty with lira and as always we bring you nothing but organic skincare vegan skincare as well as advanced treatments and on today's show as i indicated i wanted to talk a little bit about spf simply for people who are getting chemical peels i've just done my chemical peel probably about three weeks ago and um before then obviously i was just preparing myself and saying you know let me increase my hydration but more than anything it is the post the chemical peel that everybody needs to look out for and make sure that um, you understand what is happening to your skin and why it is so important for you to address skin uh, protection factor SPF that's what it stands for um, you will see it all the time on any sunscreen that says SPF and there will be a factor as in the amount or the time that it will protect you now there's two types of sun protection there's either mineral sunscreen or you have it in a chemical form or a chemical compound now let's start with the chemical sunscreen basically it is organic and it's carbon based compounds and what it does is absorb sunlight it penetrates the skin and on the other hand we have the mineral sunscreen which has used um, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide which basically block the sunlight from your skin so the first time I realized what a serious um, factor it is, 
uh, in your skincare, your sunscreen protection was when I was working at Sun Wellness um, as a manager as they and I was basically um, getting introduced to IS Clinical. Yes, we were doing IS Clinical facials then. And um, obviously IS Clinical is a pharmaceutical grade um, and it is one of those very popular, hyped up a lot by celebrities all over the world and apparently works wonders. And I'll, I'll say with acne prone skin, yes, you can go that route and you can, if, if you can even afford it because it's so expensive, um, you know, but you can come in for a facial and do it once and, you know, see how the treatment goes. But when I was learning about um, the protocols of IS Clinical, sun protection factor in um, their, uh, their creams. And they stressed it a lot um, in terms of making sure that the client is very informed, is informed about uh, the fact that they have so many um, offerings in terms of different types of SPFs in their creams. And um, I feel, you know, it is very important that you understand if you're going to buy something that it can work for three different functions, you know, and this is what I, I picked up a little bit from IS Clinical, that something will serve for hydration, for sun protection, and for moisturizing. And for me, um, if it comes together in that way, then it's awesome. But now I have developed a way to introduce that in my she butters. Because um, the she butter already has SPF, but it's a lower factor. So I tend to up it with other ingredients. And this this is what the show is about. Um, what I wanted to talk about is more the ingredients that you need to look out for in terms of SPF and which ones um, are sustainable or sustaining and how you can top up throughout the day. Because the thing that you have to understand is that SPF, there's only so long that it can protect you and most of them don't go more than an hour. Do you get what I'm saying? So basically it simply means you have protection for an hour to two hours. And if you are out in the sun, you know what I'm saying? You need to keep putting it on. And um, there's other ways for you to top up your sunscreen. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in this show. So let's get to it. Now that we have uh, seen the difference between what chemical versus physical SPF means, let's dig into the actual ingredients that you need to be looking out for. So the basics are also that UV rays are much shorter and are responsible for tanning and burning your skin, your top layer of your skin, while UVA, UVA rays have longer wavelengths and can pass through clouds, rain, fog, glass, etc. So that means they have a deeper penetration and they will cause aging and wrinkling of your skin. So you can see with the UV rays filter that you have between SPF 15 and SPF 50, which basically shows you um, that the SPF sunscreen has a marginally better protection than the other one in terms of its penetration and how it is penetrated by the UVA rays. And you can see there that um, an hour is about as much um, protection with the SPF 50 that you can get from these SPFs. Now let's look at some of the most um, important ingredients that you need to look out for in your SPF creams is HGCG, which is basically um, your green tea, vitamin E, and vitamin C. And these antioxidants are scientifically proven to fight against UV-induced free radicals. But besides that, um, ingredients such as carrot seed, raspberry seed oil and so many other organically found compounds are just as excellent and in our she butter she butter is very high in vitamin e and um, i add on carrot seed i also add on raspberry seed and combining both of those i get an spf factor 50 plus so this is an effective way for you to use sunscreen in your cream now, for those of you who may be using our rose water, please ask for the SPF 
um, rose water that you can use throughout the day as a spritz and it will give you that little bit of protection without you having to put it on lotion okay so this is our little little bits of beauty hack added on to the end and this is the very best part because it is really effortless to spray rose water throughout the day it will protect you so if you want to find out a little bit more about our peels um please do DM me right here. Uh, but otherwise, we have three different types of peels. We have salicylic acid, we have glycolic acid, and we have my fave, lactic acid is the one that I just had. And it just brightens up your skin. It's very much for everybody. Like even if you have sensitive skin, lactic acid just sits really well. There's no downtime that's needed after that. You literally come in and 30 minutes later, your peel is on good to go because what it's going to do it's going to peak two to three weeks later and you're going to start seeing hmm why gotta keep writing and i've yeah, not today you know what i mean you're looking a little bit glowier and people are asking you are you pregnant you know and when you're not pregnant it's a real good thing it's a real good feeling so this season i will be having a special if you come with your friend we have a prize come with your friend and get a discount it's about 10 percent discount like really who's gonna give you a discount you and your friend you come together and you get a two for the price of less okay so thank you so much to everybody who has booked that chemical peel i'm so excited i have a few peel uh bookings i've already done peels on some of my clients and i feel like you know it's gonna be a new culture that people are gonna get into once a month is all you need um i do a peel i do a micro needling and i do a nino needling i'm about to actually do my bb glow i just did a nino needling with salmon not salmon <laughs> snail it's a snail uh serum or ampoule and i included uh, hyaluronic acid in my combo so you could be seeing my skin looking a little extra it's about to get Yeah.